Hi and welcome to 3D Print Tech Design. Today I want to talk about that the next generation 3D printers are probably already here and we have a complete lineup. With Bamboo Lab's subtle release of the X1e, I would argue that we have fully transitioned into the next generation 3D printers. I mean, don't we have everything that we, the market, has asked for? I'll come back to that later after I've at least tried to defend the X1e's release. If you don't know me, I've been 3D printing for over 14 years and my YouTube channel is almost that old. And I've worked almost 10 years helping people buy 3D printers and 3D scanners at the company who gave you the 3D Benji, for example, create the tools. I met all kinds of customers, hobbyists, industrial, professionals, rich customers, cheap customers, and everything in between. And I even bid one myself when I broke free and started my own design business. Now I work in a huge company that is actually one of the target customers for the Bamboo Labs X1e. So the new X1 brings uh, secure cloud-free printing, as well as a heated chamber, so there's an actively heated fan heating up the chamber, uh, as well as a new hot gun that is made for higher temperatures. And you also get an extra filtration system that is supposedly fine with the health and safety people at your company. And that's about it compared to the X1C. Well, and the $1,300 extra price tag. I mean, what the f- Whew, Okay, breathe, people. <laughs> I mean, why? Well, of course, enterprise, why? But what does that actually mean, enterprise? So you may have seen that the X1E is only available through resellers or like direct quotas from Bamboo Labs. And this is probably because they need to give these enterprise customers like local and, and great support. And Bamboo Lab can't do that from China. So they need to have people around and close to the actual industry customers. And it kind of makes sense. I mean, if you're a Volvo, for example, you want to have someone to be able to come to your location and set up 50 printers, maybe even stock some spare parts and ship them to you quickly. So in in this case, the price actually, hear me out, makes a little bit sense. Currently, there don't seem to be a lot of resellers that are actually getting margins for reselling the P1Ps and P1S, for example. I mean, there's probably only a 25 to 40% margin from Bamboo Labs themselves. So when you try to add a reseller to that, that's not a lot of margin to split and not a lot of money to make for the reseller. So it doesn't make sense to resell the P1S, for example, without a, a bit of a markup. As a local reseller, you have to support a lot of things. For example, only the, the selling process is quite complicated. I mean, everyone can order from a webshop, but when people are starting to call you, maybe ask you for print samples, uh, it's difficult to start charging money, but it will cost you time. So you need to make that money up when you're selling the printer. So that's the whole reseller business is helping customers, making sure they get the right machines, provide local support, uh, spare parts quickly, even installation, training and all that. So you need to build in some margin in the printers. Not only to cover the cost for the resellers, but actually allow them to make some profit as well. So on a $600 P1S, for example, if you have 20% margin and you split that with a reseller, that's not a lot of money to make profit on for a reseller. Therefore, I think it's reasonable to expect that some of those $1,300 compared to the X1C is probably just margin for the reseller. I mean, sure, the new parts, new motherboard with improved Wi-Fi and the LAN port, sure, maybe those parts all come to $100, maybe $200 but that's still quite far from the $1,300. So, I mean, what I'm saying is that the price tag actually makes sense for the target customer, which probably isn't even you. So that extra price is basically nothing when you compare to the competition like the Ultimaker S5 and the Stratasys, which may have been the option when it comes to the non-cloud situation. So what do we actually mean with the next generation 3D printing being complete? Well, hear me out, and this is related to the X1e. So ever since we got the X1c, we have been blown away by performance, fast printing speeds and the MS options. Like, that's the foundation of this new generation 3D printers. Some may say that the Voron 3D printer was first, but I would say that BAMP Lab kind of reshaped the landscape. So ever since then, we have wanted a budget alternative. And somehow BAMP Labs, a pretty small company at the time, managed to put out the P1P, a really budget alternative to the X1C. And I'm even wondering, do they even have margins on that? I mean. For a small company to produce a machine like that, that's pretty impressive. Okay, so when we had the P1P, we started to want something a bit more fancy. We really wanted the X1C, but like in a more budget-friendly alternative. So we got the P1S, which is enclosed and supports the most of the materials that the X1C does, or basically all of them. And then we wanted bigger, and we didn't get that. At least not directly, but we got it from Creality with the K1 Max. It's also a fast reader printer, it's not a BAMP lab, so some people are disappointed by that. 
it doesn't have the AMS system, which is kind of sad, but hopefully there will be a third party AMS system sometime in the future, either by Bamboo Labs or someone else. It's important to know that I'm talking about the 3D printing community in whole, not only the Bamboo Labs. So therefore, we got the big size covered. Then people wanted that open source and they got it. So now the Creality is open source, or at least you have access to the Clipper firmware. I'm not exactly sure if you define everything as open source, but anyway, you have access to the Clipper. You can do basically what you want. Then we also got the next generation of the Ender 3s, like those cheap, throw it at a beginner's 3D printers. We got the Ender 3 version 3 SE, which is one of the most cheapest machines that you can get that still has like input shaping and, and quick 3D printing. And then something new came and we didn't get what we wanted. Instead, we got the Bamboo Lab A1, like the mini one. It's a bed slinger. Th this is not what we expected. But if you zoom out, this is what the market expected. Everyone had heard about how great the Bamboo Labs P1S and X1C were. Um, they were not really accessible. So now Bamboo Lab have put like a cheap 3D printer with a cheap AMS system for like sub 500 bucks, which is freaking amazing actually. So now we have an entry point in the market. We have professional printers, we have the P1S, we have the P1P, and we even have the Creality K1 Max. Speaking of the Bamboo Labs A1, I got mine on the way. So if you want to see me do a review, try it out, test it towards like the P1S for example, or the Flashforge Adventure 5M Pro, Make sure you subscribe for that. Then we finally got like the last puzzle piece. So at the top edge of this market, you have the enterprise customers. They have not had an option, mostly because of the security issues. And even some would argue with the professional printing quality of like carbon infused nylon and stuff like that. So with the X1E, with the heated chamber and all the security stuff, in theory, that segment is now covered with these high-end next generation 3D printers. I mean, enterprise customers have been there before and they have products but not in this new generation fast 3D printers. That's what I'm trying to tell you, that now everyone has access to these fast 3D printers. Actually, just a few hours after the X1E availability, Ultimaker released a new Cura version. Interestingly, that's supposed to double the printing speed of the Ultimaker S series 3D printers. Uh, that's too new, it's too early to me to ex discuss if that's like actually interesting. Uh, I mean, do those printers even have the hardware needed to do vibration compensation and stuff? We'll have to see. Maybe that's just a way for Ultimaker to kind of satisfy their current customers. I don't know, maybe I have to wait for the next product release for them. So now everyone in the 3D printer market have what they want, right? You have access to large, to small, to cheap, to fast, to material, uh, yeah, or do we? I mean, I'm sure you want something extra, and I'm very curious on what extra 3D printing features you would like. If you would mix and match the perfect printer, let me know in the comments how that would look. And the thing is that for those who wanted a P1S XL version, I don't know what you would call that, you might just have to go to like the Anycubic Cobra 2 Max. It has 420 by 420 by 500 millimeter printing volume, but it's not like enclosed and ready to go. So you probably have to mod that a bit. Again, I assume that you want to have a, let's say a half a meter cubic printing volume in a P1S combo for like 900 bucks. That would be optimal and super sweet, but I don't think we're there yet. So I would say that the transition is complete. So now everyone else needs to catch up and try to put their twist on things. And I'm really looking forward to seeing the next generation 3D printing that comes after this fast phase that we're in right now. Just like I'm looking forward to tell about the sponsor of this video, me! Yay! You can buy my 3D models, read my articles, and even donate if you want to in the links down below. Or you can use affiliate links for shopping. Ooh. And just a side note, I might have a feature on the Flashforge Adventure 5M Pro that kind of removes the need for the X1E. So yeah, stay tuned for that. Make sure you subscribe. Uh, if you're interested in the 3D print, technology or design, I'm your guy. See you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching. Bye. <music>